And that is a wrap for one of the most important essays I'll ever write in my life. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm currently in the medical school application process. I submitted my secondaries a couple months ago, so I'm currently in the phase where I'm waiting back to hear from interview invites from the schools I applied to. Today, I wanted to do a video sharing my personal statement for anyone who's currently going through the process. As shown in the thumbnail, this is the personal statement that has helped me so far get interview invites to UCF, Duke, Brown, and Cornell. A couple of disclaimers before we begin. This personal statement is, of course, very personal to me, so I do ask that you guys respect the content of the essay, as well as use this to help with brainstorming for ideas and as a source of inspiration and not replication. With that being said, let's jump right into it. Three, two, one. Then you'll be hula dancing in Hawaii. Those were the last words I expected to hear coming from my anesthesiologist. When I was in second grade, recurrent episodes of abdominal pain and discomfort had led me to the gastroenterologist who suggested we perform an endoscopy. Up to that day, I had rarely been in the hospital before and never as a patient. I surveyed my new surroundings taking in the productive bustle beyond my room's walls and the steady, syncopated beats of the unfamiliar beeping machine I was connected to as I tried to distract myself from all the questions that arose. I heard a knock at the door and the anesthesiologist came in. He introduced himself, explained to my mom and me how the anesthesia would work, and answered our questions. Then he told me a story to summarize the procedure. I'd be given a snuggly oxygen mask to wear and, like magic, in three blinks, I would be hula dancing in Hawaii on a dream vacation. His words made me smile, and as I clutched the fluffy hospital bear he had helped me named Dr. Bear, I felt less uneasy about going into the procedure room. Stories have played a critical role in my life. Through my visits to the gastroenterologist and endocrinologist, the stories, both medical and personal, I have shared with and received from my physicians have greatly contributed to the healing process. Years later, I still remember many of these visits because I was touched by the way they were able to console and connect with me as both physicians and human beings. Growing up, I was always fascinated by my parents' stories from their childhoods in Vietnam. As a daughter, stories have helped me connect to my heritage and have contributed to who I am today. As a writer, stories have helped me explore my imagination and creatively express myself. Stories have a special ability to connect people and create a sense of community. As a student and volunteer, they have helped me meet new people, relate to, comfort, and inspire others, and form lasting connections. As a patient, stories have helped me overcome fears of the unknown while making me feel seen, heard, and cared for as an individual. As a physician, I want to dedicate my life to contributing and sharing in patient stories to provide healing and treatment in a way that only medicine can fulfill. During the pandemic, I had the privilege of meeting Miss Harriet through a weekly chat with nursing home residents. We spent hours exchanging stories and chatting about the weather, music, and our failed culinary ventures. Occasionally, Miss Harriet would voice her worries regarding her progress with dialysis and the many medications she had to take. In these cases, shared stories can only go so far. Moments like these often take me back to similar points in my volunteering where I could offer kind words, warm blankets, or snacks. But when asked if I knew what would happen to loved ones or if I could do anything further, I had no answer. While I could offer Miss Harriet my company and share words of consolation, I could do little when it came to alleviating her physical pain or providing a potential treatment plan to address the source of the discomfort. One common root of human fear stems from the unknown. When one of my relatives was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer this year, the most my family could do was visit, pick up groceries and provide emotional support. It frustrated me that this was the most I could do, that I couldn't provide more substantive assurances to help ease my relative and my family's fears of all the unknowns surrounding our loved one's condition. I will always remember the look of relief and hope that spread upon one patient's face after the cardiologist I was shadowing visited him in the emergency department. The patient had explained that he was afraid to fall asleep, not knowing if he would wake up the next morning. The physician, after assessing her patient and presenting several treatment options, assured the patient that she would do her best to help him recover so that he could continue to wake up each day to visit his grandchildren. Moments of reassurance and human connection like these are what inspire me to practice medicine. Physicians can provide a special type of assurance backed by years of knowledge and experience. 
Even if many questions remain, they can provide patients and their loved ones comfort in the assurance that they will do everything in their power to provide the best, most informed care. It is a special privilege and unique role that drives me to pursue a career in medicine. I don't remember the exact words the anesthesiologist said that day, but I will always remember how he made me feel. Reassured, cared for, and safe. Much like the anesthesiologists and other physicians I've met and shadowed, I aspire to be a physician who can provide comfort and assurance in a time of uncertainty and vulnerability, as well as healthcare that connects and captures a patient's whole story with the hope of changing fear of the unknown to unconditional care that is known. And that is a wrap for one of the most important essays I'll ever write in my life. I hope that by sharing my personal statement, you guys can draw some inspiration or help with the brainstorming process to truly make your personal statement one that is very special to you and one that really captures your reason for why medicine. I also hope that this personal statement can help anyone who's currently going through any writer's block because I definitely know from personal experience that crafting the personal statement is definitely a process and a journey in itself. Stay tuned for more videos on crafting the personal statement, as well as more videos for my tips for success in the medical school application cycle. Let me know if you guys have questions down in the comments below and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this content helpful. It definitely helps my little channel out so I can continue to provide content for you guys. Good luck to everyone who's applying. You guys definitely got this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.